Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out the range with the new Wolverine from Desert Tech. This is an evolutionary step, the third generational step in the product line. It started off as the MDR, turned into the MDRX, and now we have the Wolverine. And so this rifle was sent to me by Desert Tech. They know that I'm a fan of this particular bullpup with my original MDR. I've, I've killed more things hunting with it than, uh, than the plague. I mean, the, the thing is just, I've done everything from Prairie Dogs to Neil Guy in South Texas, and, and it's just been an amazing rifle. And so this is the next evolutionary step. There are a number of changes that they've made to the overall design that we're gonna break down in today's video. And then we'll do accuracy text testing and stuff like that in a future video, because today we have rain, 20 mile an hour winds, everything that is just simply not conducive to getting a target to even stay up down there, much less uh, you know, resisting all the, the moisture. So uh, we'll do accuracy testing later, but um, they made some claims about the accuracy improvements and we'll put those to the test in a dedicated video. So let's get started today taking a look at the new Wolverine. We'll talk about my original MDR and we'll kind of break down some of the changes they've made to it and see, uh, see if they make sense. A lot of folks ask me, how can I get involved in the firearms business in that particular community? And one of the best ways to do that is to become a gunsmith. Every gunsmith I know is just overbooked with work. It's a very good living. And so if you would like to become a gunsmith, you need to go to a gunsmithing school or become an apprentice for an existing gunsmith. But Modern Gun School is an accredited college that also works with veterans in the GI Bill, where you can go and get a degree from accredited college in gunsmithing and then go out and start your own gunsmithing business, which I think is a really great option. Again, throughout my entire life, gunsmiths have always been able to earn a really good living, assuming they have a really strong work ethic. So please check out Modern Gun School. I do have a link in the video description below. In front, I have the old girl. This is my MDR. It's currently chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, which is my preferred hunting cartridge. I've used 6.5 Creedmoor, again, on everything from, from uh, prairie dogs all the way up to Neil Guy, which is a horse-sized animal. So uh, this rifle has a number of external differences compared to the new Wolverine. Now, this one's been modified by me. This is a black label handguard, which has an integrated bipod, which I really like, and it's all aluminum. And then uh, I have a primary arms, a one to eight power optic on here, an LPVO. And then that's about it for the, the changes. Obviously I have OSS cans, which are now known as Huxworks on both rifles. Those are my preferred uh, silencers of choice. And we'll just kind of start off here at the rear, talk about some of the things that are present on this rifle that aren't present on the new Wolverine. So if we start off back here, they're just a, 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 one of the things that jumps out at you, especially with the flat dark earth rifle, is that you have these screw holes, little screw heads, I should say, all over the receiver. And these are holding internal rails and stuff like that in. And the reason you wanna get rid of these, not that I've had this problem because I haven't, if you use Loctite and the proper amount of torque, they shouldn't back out, but they can back out. So most people would say that it's better not to use screws to simply machine those parts into the internal part of the receiver, which is one of the major changes. And then of course, back here, we have this scissoring system of forward ejection. So you have two port covers, one on this side uh, that, that can come off as well, with just uh, no tools, you just take it off. And this is the, the scissoring mechanism that pushes the spent case out. And this is the forward ejection system that when the bolt goes forward, it throws the spent case forward. All of this has now been removed and is no longer even an option for there we go. Not even an option for uh, the new rifle. So forward ejection, permanently gone. Now, this is something that they changed also in the MDRX. The MDRX and 5.56, you could option it either with forward ejection or side ejection, but the 308 MDRX, as far as we can tell, I don't have one, uh, was, was only available with the forward ejection. So a number of changes have occurred to the Bolton carrier to get rid of that forward ejection capability. And then uh, you'll notice that the charging handles, they're, they're present on both sides of the receiver on this older gun as they are on the new one, but there are differences in the charging handle. So this is an aluminum charging handle that kind of folds on the new rifle. It's just a polymer charging handle that's fixed. So they've changed that a little bit. Now, some of the things that they've claimed is that the new rifle has 49 fewer parts. And I, I suspect 20 plus of those parts are contained within this mechanism itself. So by just getting rid of this, they've gotten rid of additional weight and a number of parts. But 49 total parts 
have been removed from the new design. So simpler is better. If you take a look at Glock, it's one of the simplest handguns out there in terms of the number of parts it has. So by reducing those parts, you reduce failure points and that in theory should increase reliability as I knock the rifle over. All right, so that you'll notice as well here on the original, we have a gas block that kind of sets out in front of the receiver in, a, in between the handguard. And that is something they've taken away. I believe the MDRX took that away, so they carried that over here. You'll see that there's no gap. So it just goes from the receiver straight to the polymer handguard. And this is a polymer rail out here. And this is an aluminum rail back here that's machined into the receiver. So you don't want to go past the receiver uh, with your optics mount, which I've not done. It's not actually onto the polymer because that'll cause uh, inaccuracy. And then one of the biggest things, I think, is that if you look on this side of the receiver, the Wolverine, you have three tensioning screws that clamp the barrel into the receiver and then a locking screw. So you turn it to unlock, loosen these three screws, and you can pull the barrel out, slide a new barrel in, torque these down with the torque wrench, turn this back to lock, and you have the barrel swapped out. On the original rifle, there were two tensioning screws. So they claim that by putting this extra screw in there, they've increased the surface area, pinching the barrel by 40% and improved accuracy by 30%. And that's something that we'll have to test here. This is already a very accurate rifle, easily one MOA. So if they've get, gotten 30% more accurate, then it, there it should be a one hole gun. We'll see. So those are some of the biggest external changes. Now let's delve into the inside of the rifle because here's where you're gonna see some of the significant changes to the design. Before we get into the internals, let's talk about the ambiness of this particular firearm. So it's very left-hand shooter friendly and right-hand shooter friendly. So you'll notice, first of all, that the charging handles are present on both sides of the firearm. So right or left-handed users can easily access those charging handles. You'll also notice that the mag release is present on both sides. And then you have an, a Tavor style mag release back here. So you can just pinch, strip, slide it in, and then there's a, a Tavor style uh, bolt release back here in the X95. When you push up on it, it drops the bolt. So you slide that magazine in, hit it with the base of your thumb, and boom, very smooth reloads. This rifle is a side ejector, so no longer does it throw them forward, but you can easily switch this over to left hand eject simply by taking these screws out. There's one screw on either side of these. Unscrew this, take this off, move it over here, this one over here. When you field strip the rifle, which we'll do momentarily, you just turn the bolt 180 degrees in the carrier, put the, the cam pin back in it, and now it ejects out the left-hand side. So the only tool you need is a tool to take the two screws out. This is a little bit more complicated than on the original MDR in that the original MDR, again, all you had to do was pop these port covers off, swap them, and then the gun started ejecting out the left-hand side of the rifle. No tools required, no field stripping, no bolt changes, 180 degrees, nothing. Uh, so this was definitely easier to swap between them, but realistically, do you need to have that tool of swapping? Uh, it's not something you're gonna do in the field on the fly typically, and even if you were going to do it, taking a screw out is a very simple thing to do. So you're either gonna set it up for right-hand or left-handed use, so I don't see that uh, additional complication being any anything serious, uh, it actually kind of makes sense. I'd rather have them on there more, more attached via the screws than something that you just push a button, they can come off. So that, and we have the fire controls, which are ambi. So they're present on both sides, just like on the other rifle. So as you can see, everything is very much left-handed shooter friendly. So now let's go ahead and field strip the gun and take a look at it on the inside. I'm gonna make sure that the weapon is empty. There's no magazine loaded. Now you'll notice that when I, I pull the bolt to the rear, watch this charging hand, you'll see it drop down because I'm pulling down and then I pull rearward. That's because there's a little tiny spring in here that wants to push it up into this locking recess. And that's handy because I've actually had this happen to me while hunting with a bolt action rifle, but it can happen with a semi-auto too. If it doesn't lock up like that and you're walking around, you have it slung and you bump into something, you can knock that bolt slightly out of battery. And then when you pull the trigger, you're going to get a click, no bang. And so having it turn and lock up actually is a nice touch. And so it's very positive. It seems like it's even more positive on this one than the earlier guns. And so uh, that, that's a nice touch. All right, so weapon is clear. Let's go ahead and field strip it. Got a little punch here. One thing I've noticed is that the pins on this are easier to get out than on my original MDR. The MDR, you usually have to use a hammer to tap out one or two of the pins. There are three pins holding the upper to the lower. Uh, this one, I have noticed that a little bit of movement right there here on, the, on the, the lower where the polymer meets the lug, a metal lug on the receiver. 
nothing major. And if it really bothered me, I could easily get the slop out of it. Uh, we don't, it just didn't notice that on the older MDR. And it just could be, uh, you know, a polymer thing for this particular rifle. I don't think that's, because every other MDR, MDRX, and the Snailing Wolverine I've handled, they don't have that type of uh, movement in it, but it's not enough to be anything, anything to be concerned with. So we'll pop the pins out here really quick. There's three, as I mentioned. Now you don't have to pop all three out. You can just pop the two rearmost pins out and that would um, allow you to hinge the lower down like an AR-15, if you will. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the entire lower off. So three pins and the lower comes off. And we'll show you the other rifle here in a minute, but there are some subtle changes, nothing drastic. Uh, the biggest change that you'll notice is there's an extra screw hole here for the, the third uh, tensioning pin that holds the barrel in. So you have that difference. And then back here on the other rifle, there's a little tab that pops over the rear of the trigger pack, almost like a fail safe to keep the trigger pack in place. That's been removed from this one. That's probably being unnecessary. All right, so the real changes are gonna come and when we get the, the Flat Dark Earth Rifle, the original apart, you're gonna see some significant changes from the feed ramps here that can be screwed in uh, and removed and replaced to the fact that there are no screws out here on the external part of the aluminum receiver. You'll notice those are all gone. And now the internal rails and stuff like that are machined directly into the rifle. The changes that they made to this gun, there's about a pound difference between this and the original MDR. And that's not insignificant. Lightening this rifle by pound, it was immediately noticeable to both, both me and Jason. We picked this rifle up out of the box. It was noticeably lighter than my original rifle. All right, so to take the bolt and carrier out, I'm gonna pull the charging handle slightly to the rear and grab hold that little shuttle, and then you can slide this directly out. So again, you have, this is very much like an AR-15. You have a little cotter pin here, pull the pin out, firing pin will come out. That will, the firing pin coming out will release this cam pin, and then the bolt will slide out the front. To make it eject out the other side, you're just gonna rotate the bolt 180 degrees. So take this pin hole on the top, rotate it so it's on the bottom, put the pin back in, and now it's gonna eject out the other side. So internally, you can see what's going on. It's kind of dark, I get that. But you can see where the barrel comes through the receiver back here, it's clamped in place, to the three locking clamps, and then you can probably see some of the rails and stuff inside of there get some light in there for you guys. All right, so big difference here with the feed ramps. I thought that was interesting that those are uh, replaceable. All right, so let's take the flat dark earth gun apart. All righty. So let's go ahead and just make sure that she's empty. She is. Same thing. Got three pins. Now these are a bit tighter. Let's see if I can pop them out with... I'm going to hurt myself. <laughs> came out pretty easy. There we go. No hammers today. All right, so. Really? Those pins are really tight on this one, which I actually kind of like. So here you can see Flat Dark Earth is the original. Here's the new Wolverine with the black polymer. And here's that little hook I was telling you about here in the rear that just kind of overhangs the metal trigger pack, which is absent from this. But the trigger packs otherwise look the same to me. The trigger bar and linkage looks the same. All this stuff, selector levers, everything out the front looks the same to me. There might be some changes. Now they say that the internal components between the original and the new Wolverine, there's no parts com uh, commonality, but just looking at small parts inside the receiver, there definitely are some parts that are common, at least in the trigger group and things like that. But in terms of the bolt and carrier, they're completely different. So let's talk about those next. Go ahead and take the bolt and carrier out of this one. You can see the spring on this one's getting a little bit a little bit older, it doesn't quite have the same tension on it. I gotta take this off to get it out. Oh, actually, I gotta take the scissoring half out. Well, let's, let's show you what that looks like really quick since we have it. So you'll see on the side here as the bolt comes to the rear, see how that scissoring system is working? What that does is it pushes the, the spent case or live round off the bolt face, it pushes it to the side like that. And then when the bolt comes back forward, there's a little arm on the side of the carrier 
that'll shoot that spent case out the front of this little chute here. So it'll catch the case right here and that little tab will come and hit and push it forward and that's your ejector. Okay, so all that's been removed. Let's go ahead and take this side plate off. Then I can take the bolt and carrier out. All right. So here you can see, this is the Wolverine and this is the, the MDR. So here, this is part of the scissoring system, the ejection system I was telling you about. If you look at the bolt faces, this is the new Wolverine, more conventional dual plungers, but AR style, AR-10 style. And then over here, you can see how it, it, it's cut through. And the reason it's done that is so spent cases can pass through the bolt, either from on the left or right hand side. That's why you can just swap these little pieces around and get it to eject out one side or the other is because it can move freely across the bolt face. So um, that's pretty much it. I mean, the cam pins might be the same, but you'll notice there's just stuff on the original design that's absent from this design. So this is how you would take your firing pin out. It has a cross pin, and now it has a more simple cotter pin back here. So, and we've tried putting this into the receiver of the uh, Wolverine just doesn't work. So you're not gonna get those parts confused. And you can see back here on the end, the tail end of the carrier, uh, some lightning cuts that have taken place. Like you can see how the firing pin sticks out back here, but they've machined it down on the side, just getting rid of unnecessary weight. So all that adds up in terms of, uh, you know, reducing the overall weight of the gun. Uh, let's take a look on the bottom side here. Fold these away. So here you're gonna see some more of those differences. All right, so here we have, this material is now absent. So this material will reduce the weight. This is just aluminum, I believe. And then here you can see the three screws here you see the original two screws. There's no third position back here, but you'll notice that there's no feed ramps that are removable on the original design. And if you take a look inside here, you can see the rails that are screwed on to the receiver inside here. They're black versus the flat dark earth. So there's some significant changes to the gun. So the new Wolverine uses the same pattern of magazines the previous generations did, and that would be, in this case, an SR25 style magazine or a PMAG. Uh, the 5.56s will use a standard Stenag type magazine or a PMAG. So 6.5 Creedmoor 308 in the SR25, and then just a standard Stenag magazine for 5.56. To that point, it uses the exact same chassis from 5.56 all the way up to 308. So currently they offer this rifle in 5.56, 6.5 Creedmoor, and then 308. Keep in mind, this rifle is a 10-year-old rifle design. So I, I went back in my library, and about 10 years ago, I was at their facilities test firing the first prototypes, first working prototypes with 3D printed parts and all, but they were working prototypes. And then fast forward to today, almost 10 years later, and we're at the third generation of the rifle. Now, what's nice about what they've done with this is the fact that this rifle has a different name. Companies like SIG will make significant changes to rifles like the MCX, and they'll make bolt and carrier changes, all sorts of changes, but they won't change the nomenclature. So you don't know what you have. And so this rifle, every time they've given it a generational change, they've given it a new name, MDR, MDX, now Wolverine. So I do like that. Today, we will be shooting some Federal 308. This is some of their American Eagle stuff. Uh, I love Federal ammunition. I've been shooting this stuff since I was a kid. They do supply the ammunition for your charge to the channel. So we want to thank them for supporting us here at the Military Arms Channel with the ammunition because it would be our highest reoccurring cost. Again, great ammo. Been shooting it my entire life and their match ammo is second to none. Simply some of the best ammo out there. The ball ammo, three or four inch groups. That's the reality of it. Now again, we'll make a future video where we really hunker down and just focus strictly on accuracy, comparing it to the original, comparing it to bolt guns because their claim of a 30% accuracy increase that's significant given I already know what the accuracy is of the older guns. So if it truly has a 30% increase, this should be a same whole gun. Now we have seen some folks on the internet comment that these things recoil too much. I put a few magazines through it. This is the first shots video uh, and the recoil is 
a 308. I mean, it doesn't kick any worse than a T7. IWI doesn't kick any worse than any other 308 I've ever fired. So I don't really get uh, where those concerns are coming from. And again, it has an adjustable gas system on it. So you can tune the gas system to the ammunition that you're shooting. And you'll also notice when I do fire this from a rest, that the bag is kind of leaning up into this area. Well, that's where the bolt stop bolt release is. And also when I shoot offhand, I'll, I'll support the rear of the stock like this, where my hand is also touching that bolt release. So this gun won't lock open, generally speaking, when I'm shooting it off a of rest because I'm hitting that bolt stop and keeping it from locking open. But you can tune the gas system until it locks open on a full magazine, you know, with pressure, I should say, up. Uh, it doesn't lock open on a full magazine. It, it, will, it will still cycle with a full magazine and will lock open on the last shot fired by simply tuning the gas system, giving it just enough gas to operate. And that's how you can mitigate some recoil if you're recoil sensitive. But if you're recoil sensitive, don't shoot 308s. All right. So it's kind of nice seeing the ejection port right there because I can do what I normally do. I can see that round feed into the chamber. So I know she's loaded. Selector levers are very uh, familiar to me, but I've been shooting this rifle for a long time, but it's also in about the same location as you would find on an AR-15 or something like that. The magazine release is in a good spot, has heavy fencing around it, but it's very easy to hit and knock that magazine out for me, even with my large fingers. On the X95, this button's probably like a half inch closer to the trigger. And so I have to pull my hand, I have to break my grip and pull my hand back a little bit to, to hit the button. So this is a little easier for me to use. All right, so we got a round of the chamber. I think I got 20 rounds in here. And we're just gonna do some shooting out there. And you tell me if the recoil looks heavy on this or not. has a very, very good trigger on it. People will say bull pups have horrible triggers, not the MDR, MDX, or the new Wolverine. These triggers are very much match type triggers. Very, you get on the trigger, I press, there's no creep, a little bit of movement and bang. So immediately when I get on the trigger, it goes straight to the shelf, an extremely clean break. So that trigger is conducive to good accuracy. Trying to get away from that bolt stop. There it goes. It locked open because I moved my hand away from the bolt stop. But when you go to change magazines, it's very easy to do. You can just release the magazine with your index finger like that, slide the magazine out. When you put the fresh magazine in, you just ride up on your grip and that will release the bolt. I think it shoots really smooth. It shoots just like my other rifle and uh, that's not bad at all. I can shoot that all day long. All right, guys, in the comments down below, let us know what you think about the new Wolverine. If there's anything that you would like for me to talk about in the next video, please let us know in the comments because I want to answer any questions you guys may have. I have very you know, intimate knowledge of these rifles. I've been following them since they were prototypes all the way up to the current generation of the firearm. So I can be tend to be a little bit too close to something where I won't see certain things or comment on things that might be of interest to you. So again, comment down below. Let me know what you'd like me to talk about in the next video regarding the new Wolverine rifle. If you guys like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is become part of our Patreon family. There's a link in the video description below. You'll get direct access to me. I answer all private communications. You'll get early access to videos and some other perks. Again, there's a link down below. If you guys like to support us here on YouTube, the best way to do that, you got a thanks and a support button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash either one of those buttons. You can help support us right here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. Last but not least, please swing by, check out Copper Custom. Thank you for 16 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.